Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is a book haul. I love book hauls so much. Um, <laughs> I can't control myself, honestly. So these are books that I got either for free or ridiculously cheap. And so I love a good thrifty book haul. And so these are all books that I picked up either free from the library or uh, really cheaply at a thrift store. So let's start with the books that I picked up at the library. So our library has a pop-up book sale, which is just a cart with books on it. And normally those books are super cheap, you know, like paperbacks are 50 cents and hardcovers are a dollar. So I love looking at my library's pop-up book sale. But for the time being, the library pop-up book sale is free because they don't want to, uh, I guess they don't want to uh, worry about uh, cash in our current climate. And so I, whenever I go to the library to pick up holds now, I always check out the pop-up library, primarily to, to grab some books for our own little free library. It's going super well. Um, people in our community are using the little free library and I am so, so excited about that. But uh, so far, not so many people have been uh, leaving a book. Tons of people have been taking books, which is great, but uh, not as many people have been leaving books. And so um, grabbing books for free from the pop-up library for our own little free library has been great. But of course, if I see a book that I want to read for myself, then I grab that as well. And so these uh, five books are ones that I got for free from our library book sale. I grabbed The Constant Princess by Philip, Philippa Gregory. Uh, this is from her Tudor series, so this is historical fiction, and this is the book that she wrote about Catherine of Aragorn. Arag Aragon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, got, I got a little uh, The Lord of the Rings there. <laughs> Ooh, that would be a good mashup, wouldn't it? Okay. Anyway, seriously. Okay, so Philippa Gregory. I believe that I've read at least one book by Philippa Gregory, but it was years ago, and I feel like she's an author that I need to give another chance to. So, since I got it for free, great. And if I don't like it, I'm putting it in a little free library. I also found Death and the Red-Headed Woman by Loretta Ross. This is a mystery uh, on, again, I'm probably just gonna read it and then put it in our little free library, but this is a mystery set in Missouri about an auctioneer. It's uh, the first in the series, an auction block mystery. So my guess is that this is would be considered a cozy. I don't know a ton about it, except that she's an auctioneer called Ren Morgan cataloging the contents of the Campbell mansion and uh, she finds a dead body. And the body turns out to be a criminal with ties to a recent jewel heist. Uh, then she comes face to face with a private eye and part-time bounty hunter called Death Bogart. Seriously? Death Bogart? <laughs> who is searching for the stolen jewels needed to convict a murderer. So Ren and Death pair up. Honestly, that is too, too hilarious. But the, the first line in this book did crack me up. He was gorgeous and he was naked, but unfortunately he was dead. <laughs> so yeah. Then I also found, and this one I am so excited about, The Human Flies by Hans Olaf Lalum, something like that. This has been translated into the English from the Norwegian. Um, they were being killed off one by one. Listen to this. Oslo. 1968. Ambitious young detective inspector Colburn Christensen, known as K2, is called to an apartment block where a man has been found murdered. The victim, Harold Olison, was a legendary hero of the resistance during the Nazi occupation and at first it is difficult to imagine who could have wanted him dead. But as Detective Inspector Christensen begins to investigate, it seems clear that the murderer could only be one of Olison's fellow tenants in the building. 
Soon, with the help of Patricia, a brilliant young woman confined to a wheelchair following a terrible accident, K2 will begin to untangle the web of lies surrounding Olison's neighbors, each of whom, it seems, had their own reasons for wanting Olison dead. Their interviews, together with new and perplexing clues, will lead K2 and Patricia to dark events that took place during the Second World War. This gripping, evocative, and ingenious mystery, the first in a series featuring K2 and Patricia, pays homage to the great Agatha Christie and will plunge readers into Norwegian history and into a world of deceit and betrayal, revenge, and the very darkest murder. I'm super excited about this one, and I don't know if this one will make its way into our little free library. It might stay in my little free library. <laughs> Okay, uh, then I also got Ian Rankin, Even Dogs in the Wild. Um, I'm collecting Ian Rankin's uh, Rebus books. And so this is uh, from, let's see, this is from 2015. So Rebus has been retired, but it's not going so well. And so when D.I. Siobhan Clark asks for his help, he, of course, doesn't need to take very long to uh, decide to help. She's been investigating the death of a senior lawyer whose body was found along with a threatening note. On the other side of Edinburgh, Big Gare Gafferty, Rebus's longtime nemesis, has received an identical note and a bullet through his window. Now it's up to Clark and Rebus to connect the dots and stop a killer. Meanwhile, D.I. Malcolm Fox joins forces with a covert team from Glasgow who are tailing a notorious crime family. There's something they want and they'll stop at nothing to get it. It's a game of dog eat dog in the city as in the wild. And then the last one I got for free at the library is I Am Your Judge by Nelly Newhouse. This is, um, she's a German a writer, uh, very popular apparently writing police procedurals. And I've read a number of them and I really like them. And so this has been translated into the English. Unfortunately, they have not translated the entire series into English. They started part way through and then kept going. So we don't currently have, I think, the first three or four in the series translated into English. And I really hope that they do because I really like this series. So I am your judge. Uh, Police detective Pia Kirchhoff is about to leave for her long-delayed honeymoon when she receives a phone call from police headquarters. An elderly woman has been shot and killed while walking her dog. Neither her grieving daughter nor any of her acquaintances has an explanation for the horrifying murder. Ingbert Rodler was well-liked and a generous, loving woman. A short while later, another murder is committed and the modus operandi is eerily, eerily similar. A woman is executed by a precisely aimed bullet to the head that smashes through a kitchen window while she is baking cookies. And in both cases, the same weapon fired the shot from a distance only a trained sniper could manage. Two more murders follow in short order. None of the victims had enemies and no one knows why they were singled out. As fear of the Tanis sniper grows among the local residents, the pressure rises on Detective Kirchhoff. She and her partner, Oliver von Bodenstein, search feverishly for a suspect who appears to murder at will, but they soon realize that the judge, as the sniper calls himself, seems to have a mission, a mission that has not reached its conclusion yet. As the investigation progresses, the police officers uncover a human tragedy that will shake them to the core. I Am Your Judge is tightly plotted and delivers surprising twists at every turn with a story that is ripped from the headlines. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, uh, those are the free books that I got from our library pop-up book sale. These next five I got from the thrift store for 80 cents each. Yes, you heard me right. 80 cents each. I found um, a book in the Bryant and May series by Christopher Fowler called The Ten Second Staircase. I love the Peculiar Crimes uh, unit mysteries. They are quirky and funny with fantastic characters. I just love them so much. And the 10 second staircase is, I believe, the third or fourth in the series. It's pretty early. Yeah. Um, 
And so this one is a crime tailor-made for the Peculiar Crimes Unit. A controversial artist is murdered and displayed as part of her own outrageous installation. No suspects, no motive, no evidence. It's business as usual for Bryant and May. And then I got a Sarah Dunnant in the company of the courtesan. Sarah Dunnant writes historical fiction and this is set in Italy in 1527. Uh, and so with their stomachs churning on the jewels they have swallowed, the courtesan Fiamette and her companion dwarf Buccino escape the sack of Rome. It's 1527. They head for the shimmering decadent city of Venice. Sarah Dunnett's epic novel of 16th century Renaissance Italy is a story, um, uh, let's see, intoxicating mix of fact and fiction and a dazzling portrait of one of the world's greatest cities at its most potent moment in history. And then, this is fun, Shakespearean Detectives, edited by Mike Ashley with an introduction by Edward Marston. Murders and Mysteries Based on Shakespeare's Life and Plays. Look, he says, crime solved by Falstaff, Hamlet, Sir Thomas More, and Shakespeare himself. Wonderfully entertaining mysteries, murder, and all-around mayhem abound in this second volume of stories set in the world of Shakespeare's plays. Following on the success of Shakespearean whodunits, editor Mike Ashley has put together another equally inventive collection, completing the canon of the Bard's plays and poems and including forgotten works such as Arden of Feversham and A Yorkshire Tragedy, together with others attributed to him. All the stories included have been written for the book and are by masters of the medieval mystery. So I think I might read this in September to go along with ShakeTube 2020. Um, there are, uh, let's see, um, Shakespeare Detectives and Mysteries uh, with Henry IV, The Merry Wives of Windsor, Henry VIII, The Two Noble Kinsmen, Troilus and Cressida, uh, A Comedy of Errors, Julius Caesar, Antony and Cleopatra, Twelfth Night, Measure for Measure, Love's Labor Lost, The Tempest, uh, let's see, All's Well That Ends Well. So yeah, that just uh, sounds really interesting to me. And then I, I found um, a bind up of two of Miss Reed's books. This is called Tales from Thrush Green. I enjoy Miss Reed's stories. They're just kind of gentle uh, village life stories uh, set in England. So this has affairs at Thrush Green and at home in Thrush Green. Um, and I'm trying to remember when they're set. Sometimes you just need a nice gentle story, you know? I'm, I don't remember when they're set, but I, I like Miss Reed. And then I found Kate Quinn's The Huntress. Can you believe that I got this for 80 cents? I'm so excited. My favorite though is the Alice Network and I'm still looking for that one, but I did enjoy The Huntress as well. So this is historical fiction. Um, and the Huntress is set following World War II. Bold, reckless Nina Markova grows up on the icy edge of Soviet Russia, dreaming of flight and fearing nothing. When the tide of war sweeps over her homeland, she gambles everything to join the infamous Night Witches, an all-female night bomber regiment wreaking havoc on Hitler's eastern front. But when she is downed behind enemy lines and thrown across the path of a lethal Nazi murderess known as the Huntress, Nina must use all her wits to survive. British war correspondent Ian Graham has witnessed the horrors of war from Omaha Beach to the Nuremberg Trials. He abandons journalism after the war to become a Nazi hunter, yet one target eludes him, the Huntress. Fierce, disciplined evil Ian must join forces with brazen, brazen cocksure Nina, the only witness to escape the Huntress alive. But a shared secret could derail their mission, unless Ian and Nina force themselves to confront it. And then, these last three I also got from the thrift store for a dollar 
each, which is also it's just super cheap. So this is a Georgette hair called Beau Valet. Now I'm excited because this is one of her earlier ones. This is from 1929. Yes, 1929. I really like Georgette hair, uh, and I'm always excited when I can find uh, some of the earlier ones in a collection. Mad Nicholas to his friends, scourge, scourge of Spain to the enemy. Sir Nicholas Beauvillet has never been known to resist a challenge. When a captured galleon yields the lovely Donna Dominica de Reda y Silva, he vows to return her and her father to the shores of Spain. But he has no sooner done so than he proposes a venture more reckless than any of his exploits on the high seas, which have made him Drake's equal and a favorite of the queen. He will take Dominica as his bride, even if he must enter the lion's den. Ooh. And then I found Old City Hall by Robert Rottenberg. This is a Canadian mystery set in Toronto. So I'm going to count this for my Canada Re Read Canada sub challenge for of my Around the World reading challenge. And so this will count for the province of Ontario. So that's very exciting. This book was nominated for the UK Crime Writers Association John Creasy New Blood Dagger Award finalist for the Elle magazine in France best crime novel of the year and nominated for the Forest of Reading Evergreen Award 2010. And so I believe that's when this book came out, 2009. Did Canada's favorite radio host commit murder? Kevin Brace, Canada's most famous, famous radio personality, stands in the doorway of his luxurious condominium but hands covered in blood and announces to his newspaper delivery man I killed her his wife lies dead in the bathtub fatally stabbed it would appear to be an open and shut case the trouble is Brace refuses to talk to anyone including his own lawyer after muttering those incriminating words with the discovery that the victim was actually a self-destructive alcoholic the appearance of strange fingerprints at the crime scene and a revealing courtroom cross-examination, the seemingly simple case takes on all the complexities of a hotly contested murder trial. In the tradition of defense lawyers turned authors like Scott Turow and John Grisham, Robert Rottenberg delivers a legal thriller rich with his forensic skill and insider knowledge, taking readers on a tour of Toronto from the Don Jail to the Towers of Bay Street and into the shadowy corridors of the old City Hall Courthouse. So that sounds really good. And then finally, this was so exciting. I love shopping in thrift stores because you just never know what you're going to find. And so this is How to Tell Stories to Children plus 33 stories to tell them by Sarah Cohn Bryant. And this was a book originally published in the early 1900s. Uh, let me see, 1910. And so she is apparently a children's author who was well known at the time. And she basically shows you how to tell a story. Um, because there is skill to it, honestly. I, I tell stories a lot and I, I work with children and so I'm super excited to kind of delve into this and to learn some of those timeless, um, some of those timeless skills of how to tell a story that is engaging. Um, for telling a story well is much more than reading a book aloud. It is a skilled art that can make all the difference between a bored, fidgety listener and an enthralled one. So yeah, I was super excited to find that and um, yeah, I'm going to delve into that and see, uh, see what I can learn. So that was my super exciting, really cheap book haul. Have you read any of these books? I would love to chat with you in the comment section down below. Do any of these books sound interesting to you? Um, let's chat. You know I love to talk about books. And I'll see you for another video soon. Bye.